Hello, and welcome back to the attic. Uh, you know, I was bored, and I bought this Renogy uh, Rover Boost, and it uh, confirmed my beliefs about uh, Renogy, that uh, it's cute-looking stuff, but internally, they, they spend more time on uh, the cosmetics than they do on the engineering. So, anyways, uh, uh, this was a broken item. Eh, it was pretty cheap, so I'm not too worried about it. So, uh, well, at first, it, uh, I, I tried hooking it up, and I thought, you know, they have a little uh, press button here for uh, setting up the type of battery and... Uh, Well, it's, it's, you know, it's Goldilocks stuff, you know, not too long, not too short. Uh, I was having trouble getting into it till I, I read the manual. Don't tell anyone. So, uh, yeah, I'm, it was at, uh, LFP. I think it was a 48 volt battery they had. And, uh, I set up the voltage for uh, 36 volts because that's all the 12 volt batteries I had. That were lead and uh well i got this initial thing it was flashing and uh, according to this little bat thing according to the book uh, it said that the uh, battery was under voltage well these are all old batteries and you know i didn't thought they were charged but they were all in parallel so it was hard to tell uh i went and checked and i had like uh, 38 volts and that's you know the low voltage is uh about 32 volts where they uh, won't let the converter come on. So, uh, yeah, I got it 32 volts right now. And we'll run this up. Oh, make a fool out of me. It's 37 volts. This thing doesn't like to... See? Now it's green. Uh... If you bring up the voltage on the batteries, you have to disconnect the system because uh, it just, you know, stays in a shut-off position. So, yeah. Let's go back down. Yeah, so about 34 volts, it uh, will shut the thing off. So, yeah, if you remember that, you have to uh, disconnect the batteries and uh, to reset the thing. So, let's see. Let's get it back up. It's at 37 volts. Remove the power, put it back on, and green light. Close the door and the light stays on. Uh, but it has a PV detect. So I got this, uh, well, just a little 4.7K resistor, and that's connected to the 37 volts. And when you attach this thing, come on, there we go, green light again. So with this resistor, it gets up to about 17 volts, uh, which is uh, the PV voltage it's kind of looking for. So anyways, this thing, like, well, basically worked. But when I first got it, I, I, uh, the battery voltage was low, but I could detect the PV, and then I could detect the PV, and I couldn't detect the battery. It was like craziness and they have these beautiful looking aluminum bus bars and you think like wow this is great let me pull the power off this so i don't damage it any more than it is so anyways like when i opened it up i found this ca capacitor was exploded uh you can see right here all the paper and stuff and i just wanted to kind of check and see uh, it was there was uh, you know the glue goop that they put on there kind of like a silicone. I want to make sure that I had the positive and negative straight in my head. And I tried connecting from the positive input to the positive terminal, and I couldn't get a connection. So <laughs> what they have is aluminum, and it's up against you know a lead circuit board. Tin, tin these days and I uh, you know I finally took the thing apart and I see that you're just using these screws and these screws go right against the the foil there's no washer to spread out the load 
there's no lock washer for when this thing gets, uh, you know, when the uh, tin starts to creep or whatever. Uh, it's just really bad. And these are designed for golf carts. And where are golf carts always put? Outside. So, you know, this is going to see condensation. It's going to see corrosion. I mean, I can't say what that was happening. Uh, you know, Robert S. McNamara said that uh, seeing and believing are often both wrong. I, mean, I like to be able to verify things. But anyways, I, I tightened these things up and it, it seemed to work. But we had another problem. You take off the base plate. I mean, it still wouldn't work. Take off the base plate. Ooh, nice burn mark, huh? And so we go and look where that is. And it's this little surface mount device. This is a Hall, Hall Effect uh, current sensor. And this thing has these teeny little leads. Uh, you know, you can't see them because I can't see them. And so they have all these heavy traces, and they go in to this little thing. And what the happens? You know, it fuses the wires. Uh, this thing is still working. And uh, what I might do is I might lay a wire on top of it. Because all you have to do is create this magnetic field. So uh, it'll be some distance away. Maybe I'll do two loops. And that'll get it working again. You know, don't want to spend too much on Renergy. But I have some uh, current sensors that uh, I could put on there. It's, it's not a big deal, but <laughs> what am I ever going to do with this? I don't know why I bought it, but hey, it's fun. So uh, why does he have this problem? Well, right here, this is supposed to be uh, 10 amps going to the, to the battery. So what do they do? They put in a 30 amp fuse. So if they had put in like a 15 amp, this thing probably would have survived that uh, Hall Effect sensor, and the fuse would have blown. But uh, no, that's not what they did. So, you know, we'll get to working on that. Now, uh, the other thing is we have this little FET right here. All the rest of them are heat sunk. This one isn't, and this one is shorted. And it's kind of funny because it's a short from uh, drain to source, but from uh, source to gate, it isn't shorted. Usually when a FET shorts out, uh, it, it'll short out the gate, almost always. So it could be that, you know, this is a, a very low resistance when it's on, but obviously the rover detected that something was wrong and it would not turn this on. But this still has a body diode in it. And that body diode got hot and I think it shorted out. So here's the basic schematic of it. Uh, the reverse protection. Uh, this is a FET. This is the internal diode inside. And these are an HY5208. You know, 200 amps, 80 volts. I mean, how do you blow that out? And, uh, you know, it's the normal capacitors here. Uh, these were uh, 1,000 microfarad at 63 volts. One blew up. Now, what I'm thinking is that, uh, you know, <laughs> in solar... Everyone's telling you, put panels in series. And uh, this is limited to, you could you could use a 30-volt panel on this because it'll go up to like 40-volts uh, input. But that's it. Uh, you know, maybe they put two grid-type panels in series, something. But the interesting thing, this is a boost converter. And so basically, <laughs> when you have a boost converter and you have a higher voltage on your input than the output, it passes right through. Now these are these FETs are designed to be the ideal diode. So uh, the control circuitry will turn this on when it senses everything is normal. So you won't have this. Uh, this would be about a volt voltage drop on this body diode. And the same with over here. Now this one shorted out. This one has no heat sink. So I think that's why it happened. Uh, this FET appears to be still good. The diode here is good. Uh, like I say, this is the, the Hall sensor. 
and uh, you know that blew up because you had the 30 amp fuse here yeah I think the fuse goes right here yeah but uh, you know this is why I think Renergy Renergy puts a lot of effort into the looks but the design engineering is is not not what it should be there's just so many things that go wrong and there's no protection now they have two fans here well that one fan sits right here that's about the edge of it and this is the fin side it doesn't get any air circulation you know they could have reversed this thing and then it would have gotten some air or even a smarter thing would be you know they wanted symmetry because it looks nice if they'd move these terminals into the center and had a fan on this side and a fan on that side it'd be pretty good and uh, these things have this is all the ventilation out so it really blocks a lot of airflow they put they could have put more vents in they could have had bigger ones just a lot of things so yeah you know the heat sink is ineffective the surface do mount device can't take uh, the 30 amps you know the 30 amp fuse one of the the bypass I mean the uh, yeah the re reverse protection fets it's not heat sunk you know they could have done that but and uh, the capacitors were 63 volt. I mean, like I said, I think it blew up because of uh, excess voltage on the input. And that, you know, blew up the cap and also powered the battery directly. But it wasn't enough. You know, if you have two 10 amp panels in series, you got a lot of voltage. And... Uh, burn stuff up so yeah and these aluminum bus bars you know aluminum just is, is not good out in the weather and it really needs at least some washers with some lock washers on it so that's my story and i'm sticking to it and you know it's too bad because it's a really cute looking unit but not enough heat sinking you know a uh, fuse is really too high uh, Will Smith did a uh, Will uh, not Will Smith Will Prowse did a uh, video on the on this. He uses one on his golf cart, and uh, you know he thought it was amazing. Everything is amazing till it isn't. So, thanks for watching. And uh, there may be a part two to this, but I may wait till next year.